Why won't my audiologist let me wear a CIC hearing aid? Now, there can be many reasons. Um, that was a letter I'd received from a lady called Janice who lives in Basingstoke. So what I'm going to attempt to do now is run through uh, the 10 reasons I believe her audiologist may have decided that wasn't the best option for her. OK, starting with number one. So number one is the size of her ear. So, or the size of any individuals here who wants a CIC or completely in the canal hearing aid. So with CIC hearing aids, all the components, apart from the microphone, which is on the outer part, are worn down the ear canal. So because they're worn down the ear canal, unless your ear is of sufficient size, you may not be an appropriate candidate for a CIC hearing aid. Also, as people get older, they may develop a condition called atresia, where the canal walls close in on themselves. Now, due to this, um, sometimes when we've taken impressions of people's ears after their test, we've noticed that their ear is sort of fairly tall still, but wafer thin. And as a result of this, unfortunately, any components um, are going to need to be built into the outer part of the ear, making the aid uh, much bigger. So that was reason number one. Now, reason number two is degree of hearing loss. So the best way to describe this is if you had, say, a severe or profound, severe to profound hearing loss, then it would be a little bit like getting a smart car and expecting it to tow a big caravan. Now, it may do it, but it's certainly not happy doing it. It's not the right tool for the job. There are other aids that are designed for that degree of hearing loss. So although there have been leaps and bounds made in hearing aid technology, it probably wouldn't be the first choice of your audiologist to pick a CIC aid for a much more severe hearing loss. So that's point number two. So number three is lifestyle. So, for example, um, probably like many in the audiology profession, uh, we've had patients come in to us and say, well, look, I can hear you just fine, Mr. Pearson. In fact, normally I'm OK. TV's not too bad. But the only issue I have is if I go into a crowd, um, say in a pub, a restaurant, a bar, a party, that's where I struggle. So on the occasion that I do that, I just want something I can grab and pop in my ear that will solve those problems. Now, unfortunately, with the CIC hearing aid, it's designed really for one to one situations um, and things like television, not where there's other competing sound sources. So we've known for many years now uh, to hear in background noise you do actually need a second microphone and unfortunately irrespective of what you spend the uh, CICA doesn't have that facility so I've met numerous patients um, over the years who've come in and said well I've spent quite a lot of money on this aid and unfortunately um, in the situation where I really need it it isn't helping so I think that's really a case of having an honest conversation with the patient right you know from the offset and saying look I appreciate you want the ultimate in cosmetics, but this, this isn't really designed for that kind of scenario. Do you still really want to pursue that style for the other areas which you may not be having an issue in? So that is point number three. OK, so point number four is something called occlusion or the head in a barrel effect. So what I'd like you to do, play along now, is to put your fingers in your ears and just say your name. So say my name is, for example, Mr. Smith. So let's let's do that now. And then afterwards, I want you to tell me how your voice sounded. OK, ready? Hello, my name is Matthew. Your turn. OK, so how did your voice sound? Um, I mean, for me, I sounded like I had a very heavy cold and my fingers stuck in my ears. Um, and I've got normal hearing. So, for example, if you, as a lot of my patients have, have fairly normal low frequency hearing but reduced clarity, the CIC or completely in the canal style aid can feel as if you've put your fingers in your ears and got a heavy cold. Your, your voice can echo and boom and reverberate around your head. Um, and that's called the occlusion effect. Now, there are certain ways to try and um, reduce that. What you could do is put a large hole through the aid, um, which um, is called venting. Now, venting can help the boominess and resonance of your voice escape back out of the canal. But here's the problem. You put a large vent in a small hearing aid, guess what you've got? 
generally a large hearing aid and the whole purpose of the CIC aid is to get something very compact. Another option is to go very deep into the canal, into the bony portion of the ear canal, um, but that can then sometimes be uncomfortable or it isn't possible in the first place. So that would be another possible reason why um, the audiologist may have said they didn't think this was an appropriate style. So, number five. Number five is wax production. Now, I've looked in thousands and thousands of ears over the years, and one thing to note is some people produce very, very little wax, and other people, their ears can be blocked literally every couple of months and need um, you know, treatment to have that suctioned or irrigated out. So it's what we would call one of the contraindicators to a completely in the canal hearing aid. So being that little bit deeper in terms of a position, the aid can pick wax up on the way in, and therefore blocking the speaker, and could also, on the way out, pick out pick up wax, blocking the microphone. So bearing in mind that there's no, if you like, user serviceable parts for your audiologist, they're not going to be able to replace that speaker or, or of course, the microphone. So it would mean that the aid would then have to go back to the laboratory of the manufacturer who produced it. So the drawback then is, especially if, for example, you think of holiday times, you could be without your aid for several weeks. So it's that convenience aspect of having the aid going back and forth a lot if you do produce a lot of wax. So that is reason number five. Reason number six is if your ear discharges or if you have a moist ear. So the problem um, with discharge or moisture coming from the ear is if you can imagine putting an electronic component into the ear, it's a warm, moist and humid environment to start with that's going to make it even more warm, moist and humid. And the likelihood is that aid could fail on quite a regular basis, which would be frustrating and in the long term, potentially costly for the patient. So there are other styles of aid, um, which I'll cover in other videos, which might be more appropriate. But that will be certainly another reason why this style of aid might not be the best for you. So that's reason number six. Reason number seven is migration. Now, if you're looking a bit confused there, not the type, uh, the Brexit type of migration, but migrating out of the ear. So some people will find if they've got excessive jaw movement or if their ear is very straight, their ear canal, that when they talk or chew, the aid will start to make its way out of the ear, which of course can be frustrating if you're constantly having to put the aid back in. Now there are sort of little tricks of the trade that can be used to help against that but some ears are better suited to completely in the canal hearing aids than others so that is reason number seven reason number eight is feedback so quite simply put if you take a microphone and a speaker and you've probably seen this on a stage if you put them close together especially if there's high volume involved then you can get feedback however when you move them further apart the feedback tends to stop. So if you think of the CIC type aid, the microphone and the speaker are very close together. So other styles, such as the receiver in the canal, worn behind the ear, take the microphone and the speaker and put them quite a distance apart. So they, they can be more suitable if the person with the hearing loss has got quite a, quite a sort of a, on the severe side hearing loss and it would cause the completely in the canal hearing aid to whistle or feed back. So that is reason number, where are we? Eight. Reason number nine is turnaround time. Now certainly in the area I, I work, so around the central London area, we do see lots of patients who need things very quickly. So they are often better suited to what we call instant fit hearing aids, which can be fitted right on the spot or certainly within 20, 24, 48 hours. Now, with a completely in the canal hearing aid generally being a custom device, it means that you then need to take an impression. That needs to go away to a laboratory. Once it gets to the laboratory, a design needs to be produced. Someone needs to make a hearing aid and then that needs to be tested. So turnaround times could be anything up to two weeks. You've also got to factor in if the aid then maybe fails on something in the quality control process or if, for example, the aid comes back and there's an issue with the fit and it maybe needs to go back for a second time, 
this turnaround time can be extended. So if someone needs something in a hurry, it may not be the best style of aid to go for. So that is reason number nine. The final reason, reason number 10, is phone usage. So I've had situations in the past where people have picked up a phone and brought it to their ear, to their CIC aid, and what they found is sometimes that's caused feedback. So that's not very good for them or the person on the other end of the phone. So then they bring the phone away from the ear, which helps with the feedback, but then means they're struggling to hear. So there are certain styles of aid which can still be in the air and a little bit bigger, which allow direct connection from iPhones, for example. So you've got that stereo sound coming directly into the ears. Or for Android phones, you've got clip-on devices, which mean um, for behind the ear hearing aids and in the ear hearing aids, you've got the option of streaming the sound. Um, so your hands are free and you're able to hear pretty well on the phone or very well. So those are the 10 reasons. Now, if there are any more reasons you can think of, uh, please feel free to comment below. Have you worn a completely in the canal hearing aid before? Um, or do you wear one now? What, what's been your experience? Have you experienced any of the issues I've described? Or have you swapped from a completely in the canal hearing aid to another style and found it's worked more effectively for you? Um, audiologists, what are your findings? Have you fitted lots of CIC aids? How's that been for you? Has that been a good experience? Or again, have you experienced some of the challenges I've mentioned? So it'd be great to hear from you. So this is Matthew from Zone 1 Hearing and uh, wishing you a fantastic day. Speak to you soon.